A major new development tonight in the case against Brian Koberger, the man accused of the murders of the University of Idaho students last year. A word started to trickle out last night. They actually signed the bill yesterday, the grand jury, so... And be made public for all to see. This grand jury, I think it was a really smart move by prosecutors because A, now it does buy some time, they can build up their case, and they don't have to explain everything that they have, and again, it puts the defense in kind of a position where they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. This is Reporter Room with Jessica Della Davies. Hello, Reporter Room investigators. Today, we are going to be digging into the Brian Kohlberger case. We have so much stuff to get into. I want to thank all of you who have subscribed to Reporter Room. Thank you also to our channel members. Thank you to everyone who have come by to spend a little bit of time with me. I am enjoying bringing you videos. We have so much to get into on the Brian Kohlberger case, so let's get started. We have a lot to get into in the Brian Kohlberger case. Today, we're going to be discussing Brian Kohlberger's alibi, or lack thereof, that mystery storage unit and blood evidence. Ann Taylor, who is Brian Kohlberger's defense attorney, has asked for a delay in providing a credible alibi for Brian Kohlberger. Is the defense stalling for time? Is this just a tactic? Do they want to see what the prosecution has and then provide an alibi that conflicts with prosecution evidence? Now, prosecutors requested that the defense let them know if Brian plans to claim that he has an alibi or not, and they requested this back on May 26th. It's now mid-June at the time of this recording, and 10 days is the legal limit in Idaho, and that has come and gone. So the defense did file a request for an extension within that time, and the judge has the right to grant this, but he has not granted it. But by delaying his ruling, he has, in effect, provided the defense with a few more days. And I'm going to dig into this mystery storage unit and blood evidence with you guys in just a moment. So please stay with me. So there is a reason that there is a time limit on providing an alibi for defendants. It ensures that no nonsense occurs. In a motion filed last week by Ann Taylor, that's Brian's defense attorney, she requested additional time for the defense to decide whether or not they were going to even offer an alibi. And I want to be clear that everything I'm sharing is my opinion and opinions are not facts and that Brian is innocent until proven guilty. That said, this 10-day rule is not arbitrary. This is Idaho state law. So should the judge be giving the defense the extra time? Well, Brian's defense team is asking for this extension because as Ann Taylor described, as I shared with you in the video I put out earlier this week, that the amount of material that she and the defense team were having to review is quote voluminous. And Ann Taylor is saying that she needs more time to go through all of this evidence. And as I shared with you in the last video, I believe this contradicts the claims that the prosecution is not turning over evidence to the defense as some naysayers have tried to claim. Now it sounds like the prosecution did turn over everything. So Brian's defense team wants to create, their goal is going to be to create a timeline of events that will place Brian somewhere else besides the 1122 King Road home at the time that these murders occurred. But at the same time, the defense does not want to take away from any evidence that the state has that might place Brian somewhere else that shows he didn't do it. Because again, this would look like the alibi is false. So what's really going on here? And I'm going to discuss that mystery storage unit and blood evidence in just a moment, but let's finish the alibi. So a real alibi is not something that a defendant can just make up to try to skirt justice. And I believe that either Brian does not have an alibi, and I believe this because he was arrested months and months ago, back in December of 2022 at his parents' home in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. He's had plenty of time to provide an alibi to law enforcement. So either that or maybe Brian did provide his defense team with an alibi, but they're concerned that the state has photos that place Brian inside that Hyundai Elantra either going to or returning from the 1122 King Road residence or 
that blood evidence that was collected from Brian's Pullman apartment home, those two blood stains that tested positive for blood, actually belong to one or more of the victims. So, in other words, the defense does not believe Brian when he says he has an alibi, if this is what he has claimed. Now, we know that law enforcement collected the evidence of two stains that tested positive for blood, and if law enforcement is able to connect these back to either Xana, Kaylee, Maddie, or Ethan, I don't see how Brian would wriggle out of this because what reason would anyone have for having blood droplets belonging to those four students inside their apartment? Now everyone is presumed innocent and Brian has not been found guilty in a court of law. But it seems like Brian had the wherewithal, had the drive, had the stamina to commit these heinous acts. We also know that the shower curtain was missing gone from Brian's Pullman apartment when law enforcement went in. So who takes their shower curtain with them on a road trip vacation? We know law enforcement saw Brian throwing away trash in his parents' neighbor's garbage cans. So you can bet that they grabbed up all of that because once you throw it in the garbage, anybody can get it. So was the shower curtain in there? Or did he dispose of some things in that bizarre nine hour detour that he and his father took from Pullman, Washington to Albrightsville, Pennsylvania? So let's talk about that mystery storage unit at Brian's Pullman, Washington apartment. Sometimes what isn't there is just as interesting as what is there. For example, that shower curtain, which had to be removed by Brian, and we know the trash cans and their liners were also all removed prior to law enforcement getting their search warrant and going into the Pullman apartment. So what did he store in that storage room? How long was it there? And what did he remove from this mystery storage unit? Was law enforcement able to get any trace evidence out of that storage unit that can be linked back to the 1122 King Road house? We know that if we're talking about this together here on YouTube on Reporter Room, that Ann Taylor has got to be worried about all of these same things too, which is another reason she put in to delay Brian Kohlberger's alibi. She wants to know what the prosecution team has. And we don't know if the knife sheath was left intentionally as a calling card. Maybe he had planned for this to be his signature or if it was left by accident. But I will bring you all of the information as soon as we have it. Please subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a new video. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.